Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today our topic of discussion is public goods. So in first part of this discussion, we will discuss, I shall discuss what are the features of a private good and what are the features of a public good and how can we differentiate between a private good and a public good. In second part, we will consider the case of, we'll, I'll show how the existence of public good and the consequent market failure. So first of all, we need to know how can we differentiate between private good and public good. So first, if private good, this private good has two important characteristics. So number one, the consumption of a private good is subject to excludability. So excludability means what? If you pay for it, you will be able to consume it. If you don't pay for it, you will not be able to consume it. So you will be excluded from the consumption of it. So that means there should be a price of the good in the market which you have to pay and this price should be uniformly this price should be uniform for all the consumers and second thing is that is called rivalry so rivalry in consumption means increase in consumption by one consumer will reduce the amount available to the other consumers. So this is called rivalry. Now let us consider a case of a public good. So it can be any commodity, it can be any service. So one common misperception among people is that public good is only provided by the public sector and the private goods are provided by the private sector. But this is wrong. Actually, whether a commodity is a private good or it is a public good, that depends upon these two things. So if any commodity is subject to these two characteristics, that will be considered as a private good, no matter who is providing it. This is very important point to remember. So just let us give an example that let us consider the British Airways, the flight from New Delhi to London. So one flight, if the people pay the flight fare, only they will be able to avail this flight. So that means this is subject to excludability. Number two, rivalry, the number of seats limited. So if one agent, one travel agent books more tickets, that means the number of available, available seats will gradually decline. So this is, this is subject to rivalry as well as excludability. So if any of these two conditions is violated, we call it a case of an impure public good. But if both conditions are violated, we'll call it a pure public good. So now let's come to the next point. So how can we, let's show the example of the pure and the impure public good. So first let's start with an impure public good. So what is this? Number one is cable connection. So one Cable service provider can increase the number of its customers. And as the number of customers increase, so nobody will be hampered by the increase in this number. So everybody will have equal opportunity or everybody will have 
equal number of channels they can everybody can have equal number of the tv hours the hours of watching tv so in but if no anybody is not paying for the connection his cable connection will be immediately disconnected by the cable operator so that means what here you can show there is the excludability is applicable but the rivalry is not applicable so this is some kind of impure public good second thing for example if we consider one person is playing music by loudspeaker from his home and this is a very nice music all the people in neverwood they are enjoying the music so in this case we cannot apply excludability we cannot apply rivalry here everybody is equally enjoying it and it does not matter whether any neighbor is paying for it or not everybody will be enjoying the music so in this is the case of a pure public good and the best example of pure public good is so before that i'll tell you one more example of impure public good in which we can apply the non rival apply the non excludability but this consumption is rival the best example is in bhutan we see that the hospital the medical facility is free for everyone so in the government hospitals people can get the medical or health services without any cost without paying anything that means there is no excludability principle but number of beds are limited and as the number of the in there is an increase in the number of patients the number of available bed will gradually decline so this is the case of an impure public good and the best example of pure public good is national defense so national defense the the benefits of national defense are subject to non rivalry as well as non excludability so everybody take the everybody enjoys the benefit of national defense equally and nobody has to pay for it separately so whether a person normally we know that the expenditure of national defense that comes from the tax revenue and a tax payer and a person who is exempted from taxes so both are equally benefited by the national defense in this case what we see the consumption everybody consumes the entire amount of it so one basic difference between public good and private good is that in case of public private good if we consider there are a number of individuals in the market and let us come or consider the commodity is y <clears throat> so in the demand supply equilibrium in the market equilibrium condition what we can say that y1 plus y2 plus this equals to y so number of amount of y consumed by consumer 1 amount of y by consumer 2 if we sum them up we will get the entire market supply So this is the we can the we can explain the rivalry in consumption in this way in this by through this equation. So this equation indicates that the consumption is rival. And second thing is that the price of Y should be uniform for all the consumers if we consider if we consider a perfectly competitive market. So under perfect competition. this is the condition of rivalry that price is uniform to everyone and the sum of consumption by different individuals will be exactly equal to the market supply of the product but if we consider a pure public good if we consider a pure public good g then what will find that it is collectively consumed by everyone so g1 equals to g2 equals to gm 
But in this case, what we'll see, the price will differ. So in this case, what we find that if we consider the public good as G, so we'll find that the price of public good will be So different persons, their willingness to pay for it differs or their payment for the price for the public good differs and finally the price of public good is determined by the summing up the amount paid by different people. So this is the, these are the basic differences between a private good and a public good and here we are, we are considering the case of a pure public good and private goods. So now, next part will consider how does the existence of public good generates inefficiency in the economy. So to do it, we will use the concept of Pareto optimality and we will find that whenever there will be one commodity, there is the existence of a pure public good the Pareto optimality condition will be violated. So let's start with uh, two commodity to consumer framework for the same for the sake of simplicity, and we'll see about the Pareto optimality condition in the economy. So if we consider that. There are two consumers, consumer 1 and consumer 2. And first we will consider there will be two pure private goods in which both the, both the conditions of excludability and rivalry can be applied. So what we see here, we know that the Pareto optimality condition to commodity to consumer case that this is the uh, this is how we draw the contract curve and let us consider price of x px is the price of x py is the price of y so So in a two commodity, two consumer case, what is the Pareto optimality condition? That consumer A cannot be better off without, consumer 1 cannot be better off without making consumer 2 worse off and vice versa. So from here, Pareto optimality condition, if we see the contract curve that, so what are the condition? Condition is that, the efficiency indicates the iso quant. So if we consider from here x1, y1 and so this is the total amount of commodity x produced in the economy. This is the total amount of commodity y produced in the economy. And this contract curve shows that whenever Consumer 1 is to be, we have want to make consumer 1 better off, we have to make consumer 2 worse off. So that means the tangency point, the Pareto optimality is determined by the tangency points of the isoquants of two consumers. So this is, we can write here, I11, sorry, this will be 2, and this is I11. So whenever consumer 1 is moving to upper higher isoquant, the consumer 2 is moving to the lower isoquant. And from here, we got the get the Pareto optimality condition is that MRS XY of 1 should be equal to MRS XY of 2. So marginal rate of substitution between X and Y should be equal for both consumers. And if we consider any individual consumers 
equilibrium that means is constant utility maximization condition in which the consumer wants to maximize his utility subject to a budget constraint and given the market prices we know that mrs xoy 1 equals to minus px by py and mrs xoy 2 equals to minus so our final equilibrium condition is that MRS XY1 equals to MRS XY2 equals to minus PX by PY. So this is the efficiency condition in product consumption. And if we consider that the markets are subject to perfect competition, then what can we write? We can easily write Px equals to Mcx, price equals to marginal cost, the equilibrium condition of a competitive market, and we can write here Py equals to Mcy. So if we replace this Px by Py, Mcx by Mcy, from here we can write Mrs Xoy 1 equals to Mrs Xoy. 2 equals to marginal rate of transformation between x and y in the society. So this is called the Pareto efficiency in both production and consumption. So this is called the product mix efficiency under the existing under the condition of perfectly competitive markets. So this is the Pareto optimality condition that marginal rate of substitution between X and Y for consumer 1 will be exactly equal to the marginal rate of substitution between X and Y for consumer 2. That should be equal to the marginal rate of transformation. For the private good, what do we see in the market? How do we derive the market demand curve from the individual demand curves? So what we see here, if two consumers and the market, we see that D1 is the demand for curve for individual one, D2 is the vertical axis, we are measuring price of X. And horizontal axis, we are measuring the quantity of X demanded. So we know that by using the lateral summation, we draw the so from by lateral summation, we normally draw the market demand curve. So I'm not going to the details of this part because there are many videos regarding this. This is the way of lateral summation. I'm not explaining it in details. But what we want to say here, so at any point x1 will be equal to x11 plus rho x1 equals to, so in this way. So at any price and the finally equilibrium will be determined by the price of, determined by the intersection of demand and supply, maybe this one and equilibrium is that Oxc. So at this equilibrium what we will find? that Oxc equals to Ox1e plus Ox2e. So the fact is that at any price level, the consumption will of x will be, total consumption of x will be the sum of the consumption of x by consumer 1 and sum of the, and the consumption of x by consumer 2. And 
from here this case we can easily come to the Pareto optimality condition that MRS XY 1 equals to MRS XY 2 equals to MRT This is the Pareto optimality condition and this will be, will prove that this condition will be violated if we consider one commodity as pure public good. So now we are replacing the replacing commodity X by G. And the feature of G is that G1 equals to G2 equals to G. That means it indicates that whatever, what amount is produced, what amount of G is produced, that will be equally consumed by both. And under this condition, there is one more divergence from the private good is that in this case, we will find PG will be, so that means in case of a public good, the market demand curve will be derived by the vertical summation of the individual demand curves. So here, we will consider, again we will consider two consumers. And see that consumer 1, consumer 2 and the entire market. So in horizontal axis we are measuring the volume of public goods. And in the vertical axis we are measuring the price of the public goods. So remember that there are two demand curves for the same public good. So if we consider the G1. This is G1, this is G2. So G1, if first consumer is willing to consume G1. So at G1, first consumer is willing to pay PG1. And second consumer is willing to pay PG2. So what will be the market price? So if we consider that the market price of it will be PG star. And this PG star, this length, if I have, if you can draw it properly with the scale, you will find that the sum of these two will be exactly equal to the this length. Why it is so? Because for public good, all people pay, consume the same amount, but different people pay different amounts of money. Different people have different willingness to pay for the public goods. And final price will be determined by the summing of the individual prices. So here what we see, in case of private good, there is uniform price, but different commodity quantity. But for public goods, uniform quantity, but different prices pay. So in the same way we will find it another. So this is the market demand curve for public goods. Public good which is determined by the latter vertical summation of the demand curves by two different individuals. So for private good the market demand curve is determined by derived by the lateral summation or the horizontal summation of the individual indifference curves sorry individual demand curves but in case of public good the market demand curve is derived by the vertical summation of the individual demand curves and that creates the from this part we will find how does it create inefficiency or Pareto inefficiency so let's go to that part So if we consider 
that utility depends upon two things g and commodity y so for consumer one what we say that mrs xy equals 1 sorry mrs gy1 equals to minus pg1 by py why is a private good so its price will be uniform for both consumers but g is a public good so its price will be different for different consumers and what can we see here mrs xy sorry mrs gy for 2 will be minus pg2 divided by py and in the market what we will find pg equals to pg1 plus pg2 so if i add these two MRS, MRS GY1 plus MRS GY2. So, what will I get? Minus PY. This is what we get. So, finally, what we can write? MRS GY1 equal plus MRS GY2 equals to minus PG by PY. So, and the markets are perfectly competitive. Then what can we write? MCG equals to PG and MCY equals to PY. So, we can replace this PG by marginal cost and PY by the marginal cost of the private good. So finally where we reach here that MRS, X, MRS GY1 plus MRS GY2 equals to minus PG by PY. So in other words I can write here minus PG by PY equals to marginal rate of transformation between G and Y. So this is a violation from the Pareto optimality condition. According to Pareto optimality, under the existence of perfectly competitive markets, what can we write? MRS XY1 equals to MRS XY2 equals to MRT XY. So this indicates the efficiency in production as well as consumption. So that means overall efficiency of the economy in which indicates the efficiency in the entire market. But what we see here, this condition is violated for why if one is a public good. So what we can see MRS GY1 plus MRS GY2 equals to MRT GY. That means this is the violation of Pareto optimality condition. So here we prove that this Pareto optimality condition is violated if one commodity is a purely public goods. Because of the case of non-excludability and non-rivalry, we don't get uniformity of price for a public good. And that is the main reason for generating Pareto inefficiency in the economy. So this is what we I wanted to prove. And this lecture ends here. In our next in my next lecture, I'll bring the problem of free rider, how does a problem of free rider can create overconsumption and underproduction of public goods. So till then, bye. If you like it, please do share and subscribe and please hit the like button if it fulfills your need. Thank you so much. See you soon.